Thank you for taking the time today to view this IT Profits RIM Tools video. In our previous video, we covered the basic functionality of the RIM Tools application. In this video, we'll look at how to search for different types of workflow, including active links and filters. We'll also look at the saved workflow or snapshot functionality. What we'd like to do first is do a search for s some active links. And I'd like to find all the active links that are associated with the HPD help desk form. We could try to do a quick search on HPD, but this would just actually give us all of the active links that have HPD in the name. So this is going to return many more active links than what we're really looking for. This is powerful functionality if you want to search by name with certain uh, words or letters in the name. You can see in the search results that we have um, active links that are associated with other forms in Help Desk, but they do have the letters HPD with the colon in the name. So let's go ahead and look for the active links that are associated with the Help Desk form. And this will return a list of the active links that are associated to the help desk form. As you can see, this returns 1,663 entries. Now, in our results list alone, we have a lot of information, including the execute on condition for each of the active links, um, the menu or return field that it might be executing on, or the button field, the form that it's associated to, and then the modified by and modified date information. In addition, since we had performed this advanced search, that advanced search has been added to our list of last 10 searches. Now, these last 10 searches are um, associated to the type of workflow that you're looking for. So, um, as you can see, that list is different from the list that exists in the forms list. And these last 10 searches are associated to the user. So, um, person A will have a different list of last 10 searches than, for, than person B. Just like in our forms, once we click on one of the active links, then we'll see the details of that active link in the screen below. And you'll get all the information associated with that active link, including the primary and secondary forms, its execution order, execute on, uh, the run if qualification, and the permissions. Below that, you'll see the number of if actions, and then you'll see each of the if actions, and then you would also see the number of else actions associated with this active link. Now, if you were planning to change this active link, but you wanted to be able to keep it for later use, just in case you were going to change it, um, you could create a snapshot of this active link and other pieces of workflow, and be able to view what that active link looked like before you made the changes. So we'll create a snapshot now. We'll go ahead and keep our active link that we've already selected, and we'll select two others. So as you can see, you can either select active links that are next to each other. Um, it really doesn't matter where they are on the results list. We're going to say Save Snapshot, and we'll give this a snapshot name. and obviously a snapshot description. Once we create the snapshot, it associates the snapshot name and description with the list of workflow uh, that I'm going to add to the snapshot. From here I'll just select Save. And our remedy note tells us that the data has been added to the uh, demonstration snapshot and can be reviewed in the saved workflow area. Once I go to saved workflow, I'll be provided with this list of snapshots here and the workflow associated with that snapshot on the right hand side.